Hi friends, I want to thank you for joining us again for our continuing series of Stories from the Field. Today I'd like to introduce you to Andrew and Amy Fields, RCA missionaries to Colombia. Andrew serves as a professor and coordinator of field education of the Biblical Seminary in Colombia, while Amy devotes her expertise to the seminary's library where she seeks to expand access to quality materials for theological formation. God calls all kinds of people to ministry, we know that. So this seminary offers opportunities so that socioeconomic barriers don't stand in the way of the more than 150 students that the fields provide education to, and that their call to proclaim the gospel in Latin America is not hindered. Will you listen carefully to what the fields have to offer us this morning? Hello friends, we're The Fields. We're greeting you from Medellin, Colombia, where we work with the Biblical Seminary of Colombia. We have been in lockdown here uh, since mid-March. It's been a little bit more strict and definitely lasting a lot longer here, where we live in a high-density population in a huge city. So um, our children, our two children, are not allowed to leave our seminary campus. They've only left for doctor's appointments. Um, we as adults are only allowed to go out a couple times a week for groceries or medicine at a pharmacy. Um, obviously this has had the same impact at the seminary campus that many uh, universities are experiencing all around the world, which means that in the middle of last semester students were sent home. Um, they finished their semester online and thankfully the um, seminary here and as well as generous gifts from the RCA we were able to help with internet with food and with transportation so we're trying to do the best to support students as they're far away from us now and not on campus um, they have also taken the decision to go into next semester, which will be starting here in a couple of weeks, online. So that, as a uh, faculty member, will provide us with some challenges to think about how to do a whole semester of education for our uh, residential students online. Um, but we know that God will go before us, and um, it is a challenge, definitely. You know, we're facing a lot of challenges right now in this season of ministry, and as we think about those challenges, we are encouraged um, by the stories from the book of Exodus of how, as the people of Israel are leaving Egypt, that God accompanies them in a pillar of fire by night and a pillar of cloud by day. And uh, we just think about that, that as reminders of the uh, presence of God. You could say the tangible uh, reminders that God is with his people, even if things seem uncertain, if they don't know where they're going and they don't know if they should go back or what's gonna happen, God reminds him that God reminds them that uh, he's with them. And uh, as we think about God being with us in tangible ways, we rejoice in the uh, opportunity that we have uh, had here um, to uh, work with the seminary and with our uh, with the Reformed Church in America and RCA Global Mission to provide um, food subsidies for about 23 students and their families. These are just some some a some either money or. Uh, food um, directly to students so that they could help them get through this time as many are not uh, working, many family members are not working. And so it was a huge help. Uh, I think about one student in particular who wrote a note back to us that said something along the lines of, you know, when all of this started with the quarantine and with um, COVID-19, sorry, not COVID-19, um, he said, I didn't know what was going to happen to me, how I was going to finish up my studies. I, I need to graduate this year. I've been studying too long. So what was going to happen? And he's from a family that he had to go back to his family. They live in the country here. His uh, dad is a rice farmer. His family, they're all farmers. And uh, so there was a double suffering there because it wasn't just because of the quarantine, but you also had um, agricultural speculators who were saying that they're going to give them lower prices because, you know, the stuff is bad right now and the situation is really bad. And so it was really feeling um, just powerless and not knowing what was going to happen and not knowing really where God was. And then he said he got a call from the seminary saying that there was some help available, some some money that they were going to be able to send to help the family get some food and just kind of make, some, make ends meet and uh, he just 
as he wrote that, it helped him to remember. As he wrote to us, he, he said it helped him to remember uh, that God is with them. Um, he, he said, you know, at times like this, people will ask, where is God? Well, I'll say that he's with the poor. He's with the vulnerable. But he's also with those who make it possible that bread will come to their table. And so that's where we think about God's grace in a tangible way in this season as people um, in the United States and Canada who give sacrificially to make so that bread can get to the table. In this case, uh, other, other goods um, can get to the table of, of our students as they try to finish up their studies so they can prepare themselves uh, every day more and more to be salt and light in their communities. Um, what could, as we think about this, it, it gives us great encouragement, but uh, how can we encourage you from here in Columbia? Well, I think, and you know, we don't want to presume to speak for the Columbian church, but we think what the Columbian church has to say is a, is a testimony, a testimony to God's faithfulness, that this is a church, a people of God who have lived through uh, one of the, if not the longest civil war in the 20th century, lived through periods of intense, almost unimaginable criminal violence and extortion that was touching the church, in many ways, they have lived. Many of these churches have lived through uh, being displaced, uh, kicked off their lands, out of their their their, their lands, and having to move to the city. But they're still here, and they're still being faithful, and they're still being salt and light in their communities, preaching the good news of the gospel that Jesus reigns. And so, whether that be in the midst of a civil war, whether that be in the midst of uh, an intense crime or displacement, or whether that be in the midst of a pandemic and not knowing what comes next. They would tell you, I think, that God reigns, that Jesus reigns, that the Holy Spirit is with us to give us power in each day to testify to His to the good news that Christ reigns. And so thank you. Thank you for your prayers. And we uh, know that we are praying also for our brothers and sisters in North America. Thank you.